crisis in corporate scandals like Enron, most people equate capitalism with greed, excessive waste, and disappearing pension funds. Many even blame it for the war in the Middle East and global warming. But can capitalism be conscious? On this episode of Conscious Living, we checked out a few socially responsible companies to see if it can. First, we headed back to the shores of Kennebunkport, Maine, and believe it or not, Bush Country, where we landed at the Social Venture Network's annual member gathering. SVN's members have pioneered some of the most well-known green and socially responsible businesses and have authored the critically acclaimed SVN book series. Its members come back year after year to fellowship and to share best practices on conscious business. We caught up with longtime member Elliot Hoffman to find out why he keeps coming back. It's always given me a sense of hope that uh, we can change this world for business. This gathering was special as it marked SVN's 20th anniversary and featured dynamic speakers who shared the triumphs and challenges of running a sustainable business. This year's keynote speaker, the Vagina Monologues, Eve Insler, challenged us to rethink what we value not only in business, but also in the larger world. We get rescued by giving what we need the most. It doesn't matter what class it is, it doesn't matter what race it is, it doesn't matter what country it is, and we start valuing people for being human beings, not for making money, not for what they're achieving, not for just because they're alive, because they're breathing, because they're here just like the trees. Next, Michael caught up with Kiva.org's Primal Shaw to find out how they're helping people like you and me support entrepreneurs in developing countries around the world. Kiva.org is a website that lets you make a loan to someone who is living in poverty in the developing world. And that loan is used to buy some kind of income generating asset like a cow or a sewing machine. Wow. Um, and you make that loan with your credit card or your PayPal account in these 20, $25 increments. You basically help finance a small business in the developing world and then in six to 12 months you actually get your loan paid back. So, you know, there's a real connection that you're forming between you and maybe someone in Uganda who's a tailor. You get updates on their business and how that loan has changed their life. You're their business partner. It's not a kind of a benefactor supplicant relationship. You're actually a business partner and it's based on mutual dignity. Now what's interesting to me is that I would think that $25 doesn't seem like it would make a big difference, especially here in the United States where we're one of the richest countries, if not the richest country in the world. So $25 can make a difference to somebody in a developing country. Yeah, if you're living on $1 a day, or less than $1 a day, which there's about a billion people on Earth, one out of six humans wow. are living on less than $1 a day, just a little bit of working capital can help you buy you know, a cow so you can start a dairy business. I mean, it's just a, it's just a little break that you need to end that poverty trap for yourself. And so, you know, all Kiva does is it lets anyone with a credit card and an internet connection actually be that financier. What do you see as the future in five or 10 years and the impact that we can make on the developing countries? Well, you know, I think it's amazing what the world can do when it comes together over something. And to me, it's kind of really democratizing the ability to, to access capital, no matter who you are in the world, so that you have a chance to create economic self-sufficiency for yourself. The event also featured a product expo where members could network and showcase their sustainable offerings like these eco-friendly cleaning products and gold jewelry from ABC Carpet and Home. And to keep the conference green, members walk their talk by offsetting their CO2 at carbonconcierge.com and by conserving energy. After SVN, our final stop was one of the greenest luxury hotel chains in the world. With over 6,000 employees and 80 award-winning hotels and restaurants in 19 cities, the Kempton Hotels have been setting an example for conscious capitalism since 1985. We chatted with the Kempton Steve Panetti to find out how. We found early on that people are starting to vote with their dollars around uh, their social value, their sense of value. Today, over 16% of our business comes from people who are specifically staying with us because of our green practice. We've learned that you can maintain style with being green. One of the great reputations of Kempton Hotels and Restaurants is our ability to take an old building and convert them into some of the best hotels in the country and maintain the integrity and, and the bones, if you will, the character, the personality of what it used to be and put a very cool, sophisticated, contemporary look over that shell. The benefit of that is that we're able to maintain the inherent energy that went into building this building in the first place versus the building gets knocked down, you dig a big hole in the ground, you put up a brand new structure, there's a huge impact. You know, it's an effort to, to change behavior, 
and to introduce new practices. One of the big reasons people say that you, oh, it's tough to go green is because it costs more money or it's too hard to find vendors. And those are more excuses than reasons. If you're committed to a green agenda, it can be done. It's all attitude. We've done it with over 40 different products that go into our hotels and restaurants. Included in that are the soaps and shampoos, the cleaning supplies, the organic coffees and teas that we use, recycling our computers and our cartridges and our telephones. The printed materials are all recycled uh, with soy ink. The clothes hangers that your laundry comes back on, those metal clothes hangers, you know, we recycle two tons of steel every year. As far as we know, we're the only company that does that sort of thing. Now, one of the great things that we do in our hotel guest rooms is we've got recycled trash cans. It allows the guests of our hotel to participate in our program. Somebody who rents or pulls up in a hybrid car gets free parking. Up in the guest room, about a third of the items in our mini bar are organic in nature. Additionally, it wasn't just about the products that they provide. We also take a look at how do they produce these products? How do they package them? How do they deliver them? You know, it's a lot of work in doing that kind of research, but at the end of the day, we believe that it's more the behavioral change that's going to really have the impact and save our planet. It's not just a local problem. It's not a corporate issue. Uh, or even a social issue or a country issue, it's a, uh, it's a global issue. This is a race that the planet will either win or lose, and we are all in it together. This started out more as the right thing to do, and I think, you know, this is one of those if you give love, you get love situations. The byproduct has been a lot of people are doing business with us because of our green practices and the things that we stand for. Well, there you have it. There are businesses out there that are doing their part to make a positive impact on the world and still make a profit. And it's because of consumers like you. So the next time you're out shopping, vote with your spending dollars and support a conscious business. After all, if you give love, you get love. See you next time.